Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, in class often I have the students get the idea of how they use the uh, sine rule, the idea of the cosine rule, and then they get mixed up on which one. So here we go. I've just written up four questions. Of course, a couple of them are going to be sine rule and a couple are going to be cosine rule. How can you tell the difference? There's two possibilities. I always talk about where there's two pairs. So if I look at some of these questions and I say, is there two pairs? See, there's one pair there, but there's not two pairs. I know this number, but I don't know the angle opposite it. I know this number, but I don't know the angle op that opposite. So that can't be a sine rule question. We can't do that using the sine rule. This one here, if you have a look at this, there's that pair and there's that pair. That is a sine rule question. So if I didn't do these in order and I just went through looking at which question is which, that has to be a sine rule question. If you go to this one here, there's one pair there and there's another pair there. So I'll talk about the two pairs. I want you to see a picture in your head, help you memorize that when I'm doing that, I'm talking about the sine rule and you remember me doing that. So that's a sine rule question. This one here is not a sine rule question. You might notice here I've got one pair. I know that number, but I don't know that angle. I know that number, but I don't know that angle. So I've only got one pair. One of the other things is some people will look and they'll just always think sine. If it's not sine, they'll go for a cosine rule. Now, on this one back over here, though, here's the really obvious thing to me, especially over the years teaching it. Something is written on that side, something's written on that side, something is written on that side. That's a cosine rule question normally. There's a couple of funny cases which we'll look at later, but that's going to be a cosine rule. Look at this one over here. Something is written on that side, something is written on that side, something is written on that side, and that's a cosine rule question. So it depends on how people's brain works and which one they prefer. So let's have a quick look at this one here. I could put letters on. So if I went to letters, I'd look at that pair, they're the most important pair. So this pair here is like, my goodness, they're the most important pair when you're doing the cosine rule. You need the two that are opposite of each other, the cosine rule. If you're a letter person, I'd go C. So I'd go C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. Let's put the numbers in. So opposite capital C is little c, so that's a five, that's a five, so there's a five squared. So this one here I could call A. If I call that A, this would be little a, so I could write five squared there. Then I can go ahead to the next one. If I call that capital B, I can go across there and I can go that's the four squared. Minus two by five by four by the cosine of C. Now, the actual doing of that, you can put into your class pad calculator or your scientific calculator, that's on previous videos. That's not what I'm doing here, I'm just saying, do you recognise which one it is? So this one over here, oh by the way, if I did that again and I wasn't looking at the letters and we didn't use letters, because there's lots of people prefer not to use the letters. Let's get rid of all these A's and things like that. There's a pair of those, they're the most important there. That's opposite the angle, so that's five squared. The other two sides are four squared and five squared. And then I can repeat those two numbers, two times four times five. And I'm looking for the cos of the angle, so I can go to cos of theta. So you can write it down without using the letters at all. Let's go to this one. With the letters, I'd go A on sine A, and I'd go B on sine B. So let's have a look if we did it without thinking about the letters. It's two pairs. So I'm just going to write the four and the sine 79. I'm going to write the x and the sine 71. Now, if I rub that off and start again, if it's a sign rule and you want to make things a little bit easier, which I talk about with creatures of habit, the X is what we're using on the right first. I'm going to write that pair first. So if I write that as X on the sign 71, and I write that as a 4 on the sign 39 degrees, then you can put in your calculator and work out what the answer is. For those of you who actually do the answers later, that one's 6.0098. This one over here is, I've written it down here, that theta is 66.4 degrees. So if I go to this one here and I don't do it with letters, just as pairs, this pair, there's no unknown there, so I don't pick that first, I pick this first. So I'm going to go A on sine theta. Some people prefer to put sine theta on eight, it's your choice. And this one is 11 on sine 92. Put in your calculator and you get an answer of Two answers, so this is the one I nag about. This is the ambiguous case. Why is it ambiguous when you're using an angle, finding using the sine rule, there's two possible answers. There's, there's two situations that can be formed. So 
So if your calculator tells you that it's 46.6 degrees, how do you get the other answer? By subtracting it from 180. If your calculator tells you it's 133.4 degrees, how do I get the other answer? By subtracting it from 180. If you're lucky enough, like us in Western Australia, to have a class pad calculator, it will tell you both answers. So just scroll across the answers and you'll find both answers written there. So back to this one here, three sides, without using the letters or the corners or the you know, capitals. So on this one here, there's the important pair. So I'm going to start with that one first. So it's an x squared, then I'll write the other two. 8 squared plus 9 squared minus, oops. 2 times 8 times a 9. And then you've got the cos of the angle, cos of 17 degrees. And the angle's just here. I mean, the length is just here. It's 2.7004 when you put in your calculator. Of course, it was centimetres, foot centimetres. And by the way, that was rounded off to four decimal places. That was rounded off to four. You don't normally need four, but I'll put it there in case you look at your calculator and you want to see what it is. I hope it helps. So two situations, there's two pairs, or you've got information on all three sides. We'll have a look up further on those later. Thank you.